What's up everyone, it's Goose, and today I sat alone in a dark room for a bit. Today I'm unboxing this, this box. This box contains an amp that from what I've read online is probably the most divisive amp of this series. So let's open it and see what it is. All right, so this is a PV Invective mini head. It's so small, look how cute it is. When I first saw this amp, I didn't think it would be as divisive as it was, However, there are a lot of people who don't like this amp as well as the larger 120. You often get comments like these, or the most scathing one that I've read, periphery was the best they could do. <laughs> However, I've seen a lot of other YouTubers, like Kyle Bull, for example, who I bought this amp from. Thanks, Kyle. Who have made this sound really good to my ears. So today we're gonna plug it in, or I'm gonna go through all the channels, and then we're gonna do a little comparison between it and the Fractal 5150 model. Largely because Misha does use that model primarily. But yeah, let me plug this in first and we'll get started with the tones. All right, so I have this set up right now. It's hooked up to the Sur Reactive Load, which is barely off camera right now. But I have this running from the Sur Reactive Load into my Fractal FM9, and we're going to be using the IR in there, which will be the Own Hammer Essentials Mesa Oversize Rectifier 412 Balanced Mix. And yeah, I'm gonna check out all three channels of this amp. So there's a clean channel, there's a lead channel, and there's also a tight channel, which is like a tight version of the lead channel, but it actually is kind of like a crunch version of that channel as well. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so my thoughts, I think the clean channel sounds actually pretty good. It's a little quacky, but um, I expected much less from a 5150 clean channel. So this one actually gets a pass from me. Uh, I think that the lead channel is really interesting. Uh, it does have a 5150-ishness ishness to it, um, but it definitely is a little brighter. Um, I was told that compared to the 120 model because this has only a post gain, which is their channel master volume, but no dedicated master volume for the entire amp. Uh, it's really hard to dial in the brightness because if you increase the post gain, uh, you're actually warming up the amp a little bit. Um, and so you have to basically balance the high and the presence. I actually have the post gain running kind of high right now. Um, and I'm using an attenuator to lower that. So uh, I'm running the high end presence slightly higher than I've seen other demos do it when they only have the post gain at about three. I'm running the post gain a little after five. And I think it it's still pretty good. It's still pretty like um, cutting, but it's not too harsh as long as you don't push the presence and high too far. Um, unlike a 5150 where you usually have to crank the presence all the way up to like eight. Um, I only leave the presence at like five here. I think the tight channel, which is their crunch channel, is pretty interesting. I think it's uh, it's very good for that kind of like 
Um, I, if you're doing a lot of thumping, if you're doing that animals as leaders kind of thing, um, you don't have to add too much gain uh, above what you already had on the lead channel. Uh, but yeah, it's really good for the stuff that needs like a lot of articulation because it definitely gets sort of a lot of the low frequencies that might get in the way of hearing the notes clearly. Um, so yeah, this is a very interesting amp. Uh, one last thing to know about the volume, uh, in order to get it to where the DI level coming from my load box is uh, the same as like my Friedman Runt 50, I have to run the post gain at about six. So after six, you're gonna run into some kind of nasty power amp distortion because this is EL84s. Um, but uh, at six on this is about the same as like three and a half on my Friedman Runt 50. So uh, it's not obviously as a 20 watt amp, it's not louder than a 50 watt amp, but um, I think it's still plenty loud. Overall, I really like this. I probably live on the lead channel on this amp. To be honest, I'd probably run like a digital effects unit into it and like run a clean channel from that effects unit into uh, this and use just the lead channel distortion on the invective. But uh, I think it's, it's really, really good. And from what I've gathered from a lot of people online who have looked at like the circuitry and whatnot, the lead channel of the Invective is just a block letter 5150. But the difference between this unit and a block letter is that the presence is in a slightly different spot. So there's a modification in the presence circuit uh, between the Invective, uh, the MH and the 120, where Misha wanted a presence in like a slightly higher spot. So instead of, uh, as some other folks have described it, instead of a honk, it's more of a quack. Uh, but um, that is definitely present here. So I'm not getting as much of like that mid-range honky 5150 uh, tone that I'm like expecting. So in order to showcase that though, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to compare it with the PVH 5150, or actually no, it's called the 6160. Uh, in the Fractal FM9, and we're going to do a quick comparison between how they sound uh, versus each other. And because this isn't the bigger 120, I think you're going to probably hear a difference on the low end, but let's focus on like the high end and that like presence difference that I was talking about. And I'll give my thoughts afterwards because I think there's just a small tweak you can do in the FM9 to make them sound really similar, actually. But yeah, let's do the comparison between the MH and uh, the 6160, and uh, I'll give my thoughts afterwards. <laughs> So yeah, there is a lot of difference in the high end between these two units. Uh, specifically, the Invective definitely has more of a quack than a honk. A lot of people have mentioned this. I've mentioned this earlier in the video as well. I'm gonna be talking about it because that's like the best way of describing the differences. But actually, I think this is also why this is a very divisive amp. It's because a lot of people expecting that mid-range from the 5150 are getting a slightly brighter kind of presence in the Invective instead. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the model in the fractal. And I'm, all I'm gonna do is add a presence uh, change to the output of that amp block. And the PVH6160 model in the fractal units are what Misha uses 
into the Invective 120's power section, which would be no different because the preamp of an Invective is a block, le uh, block letter 5150. There's a JMP pre EQ you can add to the amp block that has a different presence value. And I'm gonna take that presence and dial it up a little bit. And you'll see how similar uh, the units now sound just with that little modification. <laughs> So yeah, they're a lot more similar now, and with even just a few minor tweaks, uh, I could probably get them to sound nearly identical. The only difference is that little uh, presence style in the JMP pre-output EQ. And what that does is allow me to keep the settings the same as what's on the Invective right now, but just dial in kind of where the presence sits a little bit differently. And I think that really made a difference, and it made it sound very, very similar between the PVH 6160, I hate saying the fake amp names, and the Invective. But yeah, to me, it's kind of interesting how a little presence change can actually make people not like this one as much as the old one. For me personally, I actually kind of prefer this. One of the things about 5150s that a lot of people talk about is that like cocked wah sound. And I think this kind of has it just like if you were to push the wah slightly more. But I actually think because of that, you get a little bit more clarity uh, when you're starting to play a lot faster and a lot of notes, even though there is a lot of gain on this unit, I think the notes come out clearer than on at least the 5150 model in the Fractal. And none of this is to say that a 5150 or an Invective is better or worse than the other. Really what I'm trying to get at is it's depending on the kind of music you play. And I play somewhat more of a modern style than like a classic style. So this suits me more but I think people who like more of a classic rock or classic metal style, I think you would definitely find the 5150 to be very, very good for that. Uh, and it's just depending on what you want. So you have the option of getting something that's a bit more traditional or something that's a bit more modern. Anyway, that's about all I had to say about this today, at least. Uh, and I might revisit it in another video in the future. But uh, did you think that the Invective deserved kind of that negative, those negative statements in the beginning of the video that I mentioned? Or do you think it actually sounds pretty good? So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. And if there are any other comparisons you want me to do with this, and yeah, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Later.